Taxation is theft. Hey, this is Sarah Joy Albrecht, and today is December 31st, 2022. I am the founder of Hold My Guns, a 501c3 nonprofit, which means that if you donate today, that it is during the 2022 tax season, and you will get a write-off to the fullest extent of the tax laws. So how about you do it? How about you help to support a mission that uh, if you think taxation is theft, then you don't want government intervention. So how about you support our mission, which provides a option for gun owners like you and I to practice self-governance by providing voluntary firearm storage during times of crisis or personal need. Right now, we have two families storing firearms through our storage partners, and we don't ask why our fellow gun owners in our community do that because we know that for whatever reason that gun owner needs voluntary firearm storage that is potentially helping to prevent suicide, to help prevent unauthorized access to firearms, to empower gun owners to be able to safely go about their private matters knowing that their firearms are secured with a trusted local FFL. And you you guys are helping to make a difference, but we need to be able to grow that so that that service is available to gun owners across the United States. This is the beauty of Liberty, our firearms community, helping one another, using the resources that we have in order to make sure that people in need in our community are well cared for, well loved, treated with dignity. And that is what is happening through the mission of Hold My Guns. The other awesome way that we're doing that is we are sponsoring suicide prevention training in our firearms community. That means firearms instructors, people who shoot firearms just out on the range, right? Uh, Gun shop owners, um, range safety officers, many people, over 200 now, have taken our QPR suicide prevention training. And just two weeks ago, I think it was now, all the days are blurring together, end of the year, preparing for SHOT Show, I have a lot going on. Um, But one of the students in one of my classes came to me and shared a story about how they were able to help save the life of someone in our community, someone whose wife had passed away from cancer, someone who lost their business during COVID because of um, close contact type restrictions that their city was imposing and shutting down those non-essential businesses. Um, and then was being evicted from their home. And this person who took my class recognized the warning signs that we talked about in class, the situational clues, the behavioral clues that were going on. And they, because we rehearsed, what do you say? How do I point someone to help? How can I be attuned to the needs that this person, this brother or sister in my community might have? Those are the things that we covered in class. And so armed with knowledge and courage, this student of mine talked to this fellow gun owner and said, I am noticing these things going on in your life and I'm just wondering, are you thinking of taking your your own life? And this person said, yes, that thought has crossed my mind. In fact, I have put my gun in my mouth just to see how it feels. I think a lot of times people talk about mental health. They don't, they just have this idea that like, you know, you've got people who are just they don't have it together and and it's their fault and and they have got something wrong in their mind and i think about a story like that and you have someone who has had a very respectable life and career and then all of a sudden within just a short amount of time they lose their entire life's livelihood they lose their spouse they lose the roof over their head and i tell you what if that doesn't affect somebody like something's wrong with them i would think it's like worse that if a person was going through all that crap and they just responded in a way like I don't care that to me is a problem and the reality is is that there are many people who have these silent things going on in their life and there's a lot of stigma to talk about it and we have to be able to um, not only learn how to reach out to people in our community instead of throwing them to the wolves of people who love to tax us and take our money and put it in government programs that don't do anything at all Um, But we need to be able to work with our community and train them so that people like this gentleman um, are reached out to in a way that there is dignity and in a way that we can then 
provide resources to say, you know what, let's get you through this hard time. My student, again, being newly attuned to the risk factors in people's lives, was able to help with uh, organizing, cleaning out this guy's house because he was being evicted um, and being able to hold on to his firearms. And something that we have to do as a community is to provide resources so that when people in our community do reach out to our, our fellow brothers and sisters in this community, that we then have the infrastructure to say, if you need firearm storage, here's a hold my guns location near you. I need your help to do that. One of the, the blessings and curses in my life, in a sense, how do, how do you say that? A good thing and a bad thing at the same time, is that I grew up in really, really, really hard poverty times. And one of the difficult things for me is to ask people for help. And uh, what that means is that, if, that I'm just going to plow forward and not ask for help. And I, I really need to do better at doing that. But here's the thing with Hold My Guns. We're doing something that's never been done before. And it's taken a little bit of time to have momentum to build trust. And you know what? I totally respect that because I want for people to be a little bit skeptical. I want for them to recognize that the, that our rights can be at stake if this is not done in the proper way, which is why we work with Joshua Prince. By the way, I am wearing his sweatshirt today. Check that out. <laughs> um, who is our attorney and legal counsel. And going to him and saying, what is the right way to do this so that our mission is not only saving lives and protecting property but also preserving rights um you know we've we have done the hard work and heavy lifting so that we are now ready from this foundational perspective to grow across the united states what i need to be able to do is hire some help i can't just keep plowing forward myself and uh and i am grateful for lisa our ffl coordinator and thankful for our board as well but we need to hire some dedicated people who can put in the hours and ensure that when people in our community need firearm storage, that we have dedicated people who can connect them to those storage resources. So will you please help on the, this, the, the last day of December in 2022, an opportunity for you to have a tax write-off, to stick it to the government while you are promoting self-governance, while you are supporting the people in our own community in a way that is uh, culturally informed, let's throw that buzzword out there, um, and can making a difference. And you never know, you never know if you are gonna be someone who is having a tough day, and you never know if you're gonna need firearm storage. You never know if it's going to be because maybe you're okay, but someone in your household is not, or maybe you find yourself going to be in the hospital for a while and you don't want people to have access to your guns for whatever reason, hold my guns is, it will be here to help if it exists. And in order for it to exist, we need to be able to have um, the dedicated manpower to make it happen. So help me out with that and stick it to the government on the last day that you can get a tax write off for 2022. I love you guys very much. I will see you at SHOT Show 2023. We'll be at booth 40852. And we have a very special guest who is volunteering with Hold My Guns. Natalie Eva Marie from the WWE is going to be at our booth. You can check out the celebrity appearance at SHOT Show and find out the time that you can come and do a meet and greet with her. She is phenomenal. I think you're going to love her. Um, just like I do. She's so cool. Um, and she cares about this mission. And she knows that in order to, um, to have the ability to reach out to people and say, hey, if you ever need firearm storage, that we have to have this infrastructure in place. So come meet her. Come talk about it. Uh, she's passionate about hunting. She's passionate about firearms. And I think you're really going to enjoy meeting her. So that's happening at SHOT Show. Um, and I appreciate all of your hard work to get the word out this year has really made a difference. It's been a stellar year and uh, I can't thank you enough. Thank you for loving our community in that way that you are helping to make this possible. All right, guys, back to work here. Here I am out, out a quick walk on this awesome, <laughs> foggy, really cool morning. And uh, thanks for, for spending this time with me today. You guys take care and I'll see you at SHOT Show.